Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, we're going to take a look at another of Beringer's little recreations of monosynths from the past. It's the Cobol Expander. <laughs> Same as ever, all the synths on my intro track were made by this. The only things that weren't made by this were the drum sounds and the vocal. And yet you can hear it's got a really nice sort of gritty feel. But we'll start off by taking a look at the hardware itself. And it's the same as all the other little Behringer units that are out there already. It feels nice and chunky. It's built really well. You know, there's no complaints anywhere about any of the build quality. On the back, we've got power, we've got a USB, we've got MIDI through and we can do it MIDI channel selection using these little switches here. I won't switch them because I'll confuse myself. And then a single mono audio out. On the front, I think I counted, we've got 36 different CV ins and outs, plus a five pin DIN MIDI in. So you can use this for the MIDI or you can use the USB on the back. Either's fine. I would use the MIDI on the DIN on the front if you can, because you get less noise than you do with the MIDI on the back or the USB. It comes with two patch cables, which is a little bit stingy actually, because you do need patch cables to do some of the stuff on this, and you normally need more than two. Uh, it also comes with a Euro rack power cable as well, so you can unscrew these eight screws, take the whole thing out, and put it all in a Euro rack. And we also get a USB cable as well. So let's plug it in and have a little play. Really simple setup here. I'm controlling it directly from the Arturia Keystep 37 with this MIDI cable and the Arturia is being powered by the USB. No USB going into the COBOL, just the power and the single audio out. And that's the sound I've been playing with and it's sort of really indicative of what this sounds like really. really sort of gritty, dirty feel to it. And that's because we've got this interaction between the LFO, the waveforms, and the FM between the waveforms and FM on the frequency of the filter as well. Loads of little things to play with. So let's start off just showing you exactly what we've got here. And when you first look at this, it does look a little bit weird, a little bit strange, like what's going on here? But actually it's a pretty simple synth, but it's got a few unique features. So you've got two VCOs, so two voices, voice one, voice two. A single uh, low pass filter. Really nice. We've got two ADS envelopes that are a bit like you get on the Mini Moog and we can turn a release on by taking this decay off. So really you sort of get like an ADSR, but the decay is the same as the release. And then over on the left hand side, we've got an LFO. And this goes really fast. So let's um, modulate just one of the oscillators, just the VCO2. This volume knob here is the volume of the LFO, so the level of the LFO out. But it goes really fast, as I say. So you're almost getting those like FM tones just from this. Really juicy sound in that, isn't it? And down on the left-hand side, we've got this voltage processor, which is basically like an amplifier, so you can take 
um, a signal out of one of these and you can change the level of it and then send it out through that to something else. We'll do that in a second. And then down here, we've got just the controls for the filter. So actually it's all pretty standard stuff. We've got a noise generator here, and this is where we start to have to patch things in. You can't use the noise generator without a cable. The noise out comes through this patch here. And if you look at all these little lines on it, that's the signal flow, and it's actually all quite standard stuff. It's quite easy to follow. So LFO goes to the volume. That's the level of the volume. LFO one out goes via the volume. LF two out ignores the volume. So that's always at peak level. And looking at the VCOs, you can see there's different signal paths for VCO1 and VCO2. So VCO1 comes out of this patch point here. So when you turn the volume up, it's always coming out of there and it's coming into the filter. Whereas VCO2, once you put it in there, you disconnect the signal to the filter. The flow diagram shows it goes to the CV out and then to the filter. Whereas on this one, it's going to the VCO out and to the filter. And I'll show that in a second, but really useful to look at those things they're not just there to make it look pretty so anyway noise out let's stick it into the vcf audio in so it's going into the filter now let's turn the volume down of both the oscillators i'm just listening to the noise We've got pink noise which is a bit bit duller sounding it's got a bit of power that hasn't it but if we bring in one of the oscillators The noise is pretty loud, so we need to be able to turn that down, which is where this little voltage processor comes in. So the noise out goes into the input of the voltage processor, and then the out we'll put into the filter. So now we can adjust just the level of the noise. And this is why I say just having the two patch cables is a little bit stingy, because that's it, I've used them all up now, just to hear the noise. So a couple more in the box would be nice, but I don't think we're gonna get it. They're only cheap, aren't they? So now if we wanted to modulate the filter with the LFO, take the LFO one out and stick it into the VCF frequency input. And change that to a square maybe. Anyway, that's how it works. Let's take a look at patching some decent tones with it, shall we? We'll start off making something really simple with a single VCO, so just one of them turned up. Beefy and powerful lining. And these oscillators are great, they go from a triangle to a sharp tooth to a sawtooth then a square and different pulses. And if we go all the way to the right, we get pulse width modulation. And that's being modulated with the LFO at the minute. But the fact that you can modulate through these waveforms gives you some really nice, weird sounds. So let's go from LFO1 out to the VCO1 waveform. So you can get some really nice rhythmic pulsing things. Unfortunately, I don't think you can sync the LFO with anything. So you have to be careful when you do this. And basically what you have to do is sample a little section. So you'd sample that and then use it in a beat so it doesn't go out of time. And as you've got outputs for both the oscillators and they both go down to LFO rates, we've actually got three LFOs and these are really interesting LFOs. And that's why it's the Cobalt Expander, because if you introduce this into another system, you've got like really nice, weird little LFOs there.
and we can sink VCO2 to VCO1. And to get that typical sync tone, we can modulate this frequency with one of the envelopes. We're not hearing too much there, and that's because it's so modulated. So what we really need to do is adjust the amount of modulation. So we go into this voltage processor here, input, and then output to the frequency. Nice start though, isn't it? But what I really like doing with this is not using the envelopes, but using the LFO to modulate the frequency of oscillator two. So let's just go from there. So start using this. <laughs> Bear with me. There ah, you go. Lovely all that. So it's Staying in tune with VCO1. But it's being modulated, so you're just getting that massive range of tones. And that just gives a really dirty sound, I think. And that's what I used in that intro track for the lead sound. Something like this. And it's where you get really interesting tones that don't just sound like standard synth tones. And when you hear them in a track, you can't work out how somebody made them. This is the sort of stuff people do. So what are my final thoughts? So there you have it, the Cobol Expander from Berenguer. You can't go wrong, it's 173 pounds. Well, at least this what was. And it's a, just a really nice synth. It's got a really nice flavor. It's got a really nice texture to the tone. And there's things you can do in it you can't do in other synths. So if you're looking for something a little bit different to your standard monos, definitely worth checking it out. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, don't forget, you can catch it whenever you like on our Clubbing TV official YouTube channel on the From the Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see what I can do to answer them. And if you are into your synths, your drum machines and everything else, do take a look at my Starsky Car YouTube channel as well, where I've got more in-depth um, analysis of the Cobalt. So I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio.